much for being on this Zoom call with me. Uh, this is Dr. Joan Burgess Wells. Did I say that correctly? Your yes. name? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. And Dr. Wells, thank you so much for being with us. I know that we'd love to be uh, in person with these uh, dear special people in Ukraine that have gone through so much right now, but I am glad that I can interview you and ask you some questions about this wonderful resource that you created for us today. So let me introduce you first, and then I'm gonna ask you some questions, okay? This is Dr. Joan Burgess Wells, has a PhD in clinical psychology from the University of Denver. She is a professor emeritus in counseling a licensed clinical psychologist, and uh, also a special education teacher for 10 years. Yes. Uh, and you're a professor in counseling with Denver Seminary, again, for 25 years. We're just privileged to be with you today and to just talk about this new resource you create. I think it's sort of new, but you've used it in the past, I believe, as well. Some of the Parts of it, yes. Okay, but this is about art therapy, for traumatized children. And so thank you so much for being with us. To start off with, uh, what sort of got you thinking about even creating this uh, a resource and have you used art therapy with traumatized children in the past? I have. Um, I have found art therapy to be a very effective way to draw out from children uh, the pain that is inside that they themselves might not be able to access with language. And so I have, I have done art therapy, children in school uh, settings, and also in private practice. I have taught a art therapy as well. When I taught a child therapy class in Guatemala, they loved the art therapy projects that were taught and, and they practiced them in class. They were most appreciative of that. So yes, I, I have done that. Do you know of any particular even story as we even start off, off about this of of where you've seen art therapy effective in helping and helping a child talk. Let me relate a story of uh, a boy that was, I believe, eight, uh, possibly nine. Um, he was delayed developmentally because of a lot of emotional problems. A boy with Hawaiian origin, actually, mm -hmm. and he came mm -hmm. into therapy uh, to work on anger management. Uh, it was very clear. I, I wish I had uh, brought his drawings over here, but they're in a box somewhere. I, I saved them. When he started drawing, his drawings were very uh, intense scribbles around and around and around mm -hmm. with a lot of pressure with the crayons or the pencil to the point where he was actually making holes in the paper. Oh. And as, as we began working with him, mm -hmm. Uh, not only art therapy, but other things that we were doing with him, uh, we could see changes uh, in his drawings. They, they had more content, uh, some other colors besides black, which was what he initially chose. Yeah. And he began drawing pictures that we would call representational pictures. In other words, he, he would draw pictures of his pets, his family, trees, flowers, and his drawings progressed so that they were drawings that we could look at and comment on with a lot of appreciation. And so there was that progress over a period of months. It was not only the art therapy, but this was a young man who had good verbal skills as well. And we could exchange conversation with him. But I remember his art because it was so intense yeah. and, um, and changed so dramatically. Wow. And so that, yeah, you saw some real, real benefit, it sounds like, from being able to talk with him and working through uh, the issues yes. here. That sounds great. We're actually speaking with many that are respecting the Bible as a source, uh, a source of truth. And so I would even just like to back up even and ask you, uh, have you thought through it all like a biblical basis for uh, the art therapy? Yes. Uh, I thought about that all the way through, Mike. Um, <laughs> when we talk about a biblical basis for most things, and I will include art therapy, I believe that we must always start with the image of God in humanity, the Imago Dei. And <clears throat> from there, we move to 
speaking about the intrinsic value that uh, human beings have before God. Mm. And as we think about uh, the intrinsic value of children uh, it, before God, it is very clear if we put all of the biblical passages together, which would take us a long time, it's clear that God places a very great value on children and the care yeah. of children. Yes. So true. Isn't that true? I believe that the way in which adults, kind, compassionate adults relate to children touches into agape love. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All of us can probably think back um, on our own childhood and remember people. In my case, it would be one of my grandmothers who showed acceptance no matter what, even when I had done something wrong. She was patiently able and willing to talk to me about it rather than taking a punitive approach. And I remember her as someone who encouraged my own thinking about agape love flowing through uh, another person. And uh, my, my grandmother was one of the kindest people that I can remember in my childhood, but I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know about agape love. I was just a child, but I look back now and, and think upon that. Well, you do, you're just just showing uh, visually uh, who God is ultimately through. I think that way you described it through the love that that person is is showing and caring and listening. Uh, oh, can we all understand how if someone just listens to them, how much we feel loved uh, in that approach, and that ultimately is showing God. Yes, and as as we relate to children in that manner, and as we work with children, indeed we. The Holy Spirit is working through us as well. Yeah, yeah. So that would be a very important uh, biblical concept is that that Holy Spirit is always energizing us and teaching us and showing us a better way as we uh, try to help children. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a really good point. So what are your hopes then? Okay, we've seen that there's a biblical basis for, for the art therapy. Um, you've uh, seen success in using it. Uh, even with trauma, traumatized children. So what are your hopes for this project? Uh, I have a number of hopes for this project. Um, I would want to, as God allows me, impart just some basic therapeutic skills uh, that come from my own experience. I, I am uh, blessed to share mm -hmm. just anything mm -hmm. that I know and anything that I have learned through working with children and then through my own study and my own research. So providing those kinds of uh, understandings and skills would, um, would be important. Uh, I would also want to bring about all of the kinds of things such as reduction of stress and um, emotional healing and all of the things that we talk about as being a part of art therapy. I would want to assist in that process in helping children with painful emotions and being able to express those. When we work with children, we, we know that what we are doing, this would be true of adults as well, I think, we're, we're not bringing them to a, per, a perfect place, but mm -hmm. we are hopefully allowing them to return to a place where their normal development can continue. And so I would hope for that. Yes, yes. Oh, that is that is great. Those are great hopes. And, um, and I know that that's what, that's what we have to hold on to, even in the midst of uh, this is not post-trauma for many of these children. This is actually in Ukraine right now. They're living in the trauma right now. Yes. They're living in the fears currently. Developmental process in this, uh, talking through this. Um, thank you so much for, for uh, working on this and, and allowing us to provide this free of charge, a free of charge resource to whoever can use this. What drew you then to the creation of this project? One of the things that drew me to the creation of this project was thinking back a, a long way back in history of people. We could go back to World War II, for example, and think about the children that were traumatized by the war uh, bombing and destruction. And <clears throat> I, have, I have done a fair amount of reading about the work of Anna Freud. Um, I'll just hold her book up here. In 1943, she wrote this book called War and Children. Oh. And she herself, um, she started in Western Europe, but then she came to London 
and developed the very famous Hampstead Clinics. And through her research, she, uh, she had case studies of about 2,000 children in England who were impacted by the war. And then she developed techniques that to this day we use uh, and we find to be effective in understanding the responses of children who, um, who are orphans, uh, who have perhaps been injured themselves and who are homeless. And so uh, I, I wanted to remember and honor the work of Anna Freud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in our current generation, there are others who have written extensively about working with traumatized children, specifically often using art therapy, such as Dr. Eliana Gill and uh, Dr. Kathy Malchiotti. So um, I was drawn to this project because I have so respected the work of, of the, the people that I have just named. Uh, I wanted to draw upon my own experience as I've stated earlier too. I, I uh, like sharing the things that I've done, especially mm -hmm. if I've seen children improving and when the child improves, then the family system begins to improve. And so it was very desirable to me to share my own experience. And so that drew me um, to this project as well. Oh, that's really great. It's been um, a blessing to be involved with uh, Ukraine uh, for many years now, actually for 20 years now, my wife and I, Judy, have been involved with Ukraine and living there for 10 years ourselves and raising our own children there. So we've seen the work of many uh, children workers there, teenage workers as well, youth workers, and then also what we call parachurch ministries, basically yes. those ministries that work alongside the church and, and to accomplish the goals there. The Youth for Christ Ukraine has been a, a real key in that area and their day center ministries and others having volunteers. So this, I think there'll be a wonderful resource for workers and volunteers in the day center ministries as well as parents themselves, just generally parents. And so mm -hmm. what is most important for you think for this child volunteer, a helper to remember? I would say to every single volunteer, never underestimate the power of your presence. Mm -hmm. And even if you are in the process of developing some uh, therapeutic skills and um, skills in, in helping children, just your presence, being there with the child, uh, providing careful listening to the child, maybe uh, things such as repeating back to the child what the child has said so that they know that you are listening, but your presence is more important than, than you can ever imagine. I would want the volunteers to know, I want to give them the affirmation that they can make a difference. Mm. Uh, as I think back on the work again of Anna Freud in England, I was so aware as I read her work over time, she made a difference. Mm -hmm. And these workers, these volunteers can make a difference. They need to trust that God will work through them and that their efforts will um, be very effective with children. Years later, these children uh, will look back and remember these people. They may not remember all the children they worked with, but these children will probably remember them as a loving, kind adult who was helping. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think you're totally right in that. I think that we can, any way that we can encourage those working with children and teenagers, it's just, it just thank you so much for, for being part of that encouragement. I believe what you've said is so true. Can you provide a little overview of what this art therapy project is, what, what it is, the resource that we're, where we're looking at? Uh, yes, I will. A good part of um, a beginning part of the art therapy project was uh, just um, basic knowledge of the use of art therapy with children. There, there are some narratives that are written. And so just acquainting people with what art therapy is about. It's, it's a subcategory of play therapy. Um, play therapy is a, a very respected way of working with children because children don't have the development to just sit across the room as an adult would and tell you what is, is bothering them. So uh, I wanted to impart some knowledge of developmental uh, processes there. It's important to recognize that the behaviors that are normal for a five-year-old may not be, be normal for a, a nine-year-old. We need also though, at the same time to recognize that 
traumatized children will show developmental delays because of the trauma. Uh -huh. But it's important to, to know just a little bit about the developmental stages. We get that through their drawings. We get that in other ways, but I, I have written some about that. I think that's quite important. Um, and then finally, uh, there are 15 chosen activities that I included in, in that art project, uh, or yes, the art therapy project. If I might, I'll, I'll just mention one or two of those and yes, please. Why, those, mm -hmm. why those were chosen. Art therapy, um, uh, it, as a special kind of play therapy, uh, is, is so effective with children, but um, I think there are, there are special kinds of art therapy projects that tend to be more important and have greater therapeutic value. And I'll, I'll just mention a few of those. One of the uh, activities in the, in the art therapy project is called the group aquarium or pawn game. Mm, and mm -hmm. uh, it's therapeutic. It's not just a game. It's not just an activity. It's a therapeutic activity, first of all, because it's a shared activity. It involves a number of children or a number of people. Um, this project actually was used with the, the uh, Sandy Hook children here in the United States. It was a school shooting and it was found to be very effective because the child um, uh, cuts out and decorates a fish and the volunteer emphasizes that the scales on the fish are protecting the fish. So we have the idea of protection and safety that comes into <clears throat> that particular project. So that's an example of a therapeutic uh, art activity. And so uh, I would mention that um, there is an activity called My Favorite Place uh, Mural. And again, it's a shared activity. Uh, children can imagine or dream of the place they want to be because many of these children have been displaced. And so in this activity, they think back on the town and the home and the school that they probably miss. And they can create a mural where they actually draw in those things that they, that they would like to have back again. Uh, people, playgrounds, and uh, other things that are in that child's memory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Another example of a therapeutic art activity. Um, some art activities are therapeutic just because they're fun. I would include the crayon sculpture activity in that, you know, just stacking crayons. And, and I don't know that I would call it art therapy exactly, except that someone is there uh, applauding what the child has done and also just allowing the child to have fun. Mm, and that's so true. I'll, I'll remember that. I remember we uh, once did a camp um, uh, years ago near the uh, war front in Ukraine. The leader that brought the, uh, the teenagers to our camp, and I asked her a little bit, what is it that at this particular camp that we can give these kids for a week that are hearing rockets, you know, all the time mm -hmm. next to them and their living conditions? much worse now but and even in those situations at time what can we give them at this camp that they could really you know benefit from and she, I was just surprised at the very simple answer have fun with them just have fun just yes. enjoy the week have fun they need right. to laugh they need to enjoy this time with you with you just enjoy and have play with them enjoy that so I would strongly agree with that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's great to hear. And I know that these projects will be, it will be uh, contributing to that, as well as contributing to the listening and to the, uh, to the opportunities for these children to open up in a way uh, that maybe they wouldn't otherwise. You know, we're going to have lots of parents uh, involved with uh, this, uh, uh, hopefully this art therapy with their children. Can you discuss some of the important aspects of uh, fil filial therapy? Why is it an important choice for this art therapy project? Uh, yes, filial therapy as is, I believe a very underutilized kind of therapy. It's a therapy which involves the parents or sometimes the grandparents. That word filial is quite rich with meaning. Um, it uh, refers to the relationship of an older person with the child mm. and can bring um, comfort, uh, who can bring understanding and wisdom to the child. 
and so the term filial therapy. Filial therapy involves training parents with mm. the kinds of skills that the volunteers have been acquiring. Mm. And uh, if it's actually a, a trained therapist uh, with the skills that the therapist has, but um, anything that the parent does with the child probably has greater power than, than anything that a, a therapist would do. So when parents can um, relate to their children by uh, learning how to listen carefully, learning how to reflect, uh, learning how to admire the children's work and give them that feedback, then uh, helping their children in troubled times uh, can be far more effective through that parent's involvement. Um, they will, those benefits will continue well beyond the time of crisis. It will draw the parent closer to the child. Yeah. Oh, that's so great to hear, uh, Dr. Wells, and just to, just to hear uh, your encouragement. We'll be able to use this project with the, whether it's uh, children that are their own children or possibly children that they are working with. Um, what a great resource. I can't thank you enough for providing this for us and be able to give this away uh, to those in need. Um, um, it, it's my privilege and my blessing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any last comments or any thoughts that you would have uh, as we as we conclude here? I, I, I neglected to make one particular comment about filial therapy. I would just draw attention to this page is in is in the packet. I'll just hold it up here. And oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, it's the core values of filial therapy. But I want to say that these are the core values of almost any of the projects that uh, are provided here. So I just happened to spot this on my desk here and thought I would hold it up. But what, what the designer has done here is quite nice. But um, those are worth paying attention to. So I'll just, I'll put that out there. That is great. Thank you so much. And then, and, uh, and you put up the English version of it, but I'm glad, to, I'm glad to know that, that our, our uh, graphic designers and translators they have all the Ukrainian words up in the same way. And I, I was impressed with that. They did a great job. Oh, they did. <laughs> so thank beautiful. you. Thank you again, Dr. Wells. It's just a, such a pleasure to talk with you. Uh, I wish that you could be with us in Kiev. In fact, I'm only going to be a very short time in Kiev as we start and give this mm -hmm. project away. But I, I believe that this is going to have um, not just, uh, uh, how do I say, benefit in Kiev and Ukraine and be, but even beyond, uh, for those that are there, any tra traumatized child could benefit from the projects that are here uh, that you've presented here. Thank you so much, and and I will take the thank you for sending me the English version, and I that is going to be a Christmas gift for a number of people who uh, are parents or grandparents that I know here. Um, in the United States, the, the Denver area. So I will make use of it and distribute it even wider. Oh, that is great to hear. That is great. And who knows, it probably could be even translated in other languages beyond Ukrainian after this. So who Maybe knows? Maybe Spanish. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We can get it Spanish next. Blessings to you, Dr. Wells. Thank you so much again for your time and especially uh, for providing this resource for, for uh, volunteers and parents around the world. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Dr. Manna. I appreciate mm -hmm. all of my work with you. It's been enjoyable. Oh, it has been. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs>